scams, cons, and Ponzi schemes. So, uh, we've had a, an inquiry via um, yeah. Kronos, who was here at our last meetup, asking about Steemit. Okay. Um, so, we thought, well, we've, heard, we've read it is a Ponzi scheme, in some people's opinion. Okay. Um, and so, and then also there have been other Ponzi schemes around, and so we're just thinking what constitutes a Ponzi scheme, what around at the moment is a scam, and what isn't. Mm. So that was our sort of starting point, really. So, um, what do you know about Steemit? Do you know? Yeah, that's that's how I can't comment on Steemit. Um, I've not heard of them at all. Um, Obviously, I've come across quite a few Ponzi schemes associated with, well, cryptocurrency or within this space. Um, I think the most famous one of re- well, most famous one of recent years was the Triple M scheme of China, which was run by a Russian guy who was encouraging chi- uh, Chinese people to invest into a Bitcoin, into Bitcoin as a solid, uh, safe haven sort of investment. Um, and a lot of Chinese people were putting money into it. But I suppose that was on the backdrop of the same thing pretty much happening on the stock exchange in that country because there was a lot of middle class or emerging middle class Chinese people who were looking for a safe place for their money. Uh, they'd heard about Bitcoin and this particular scheme, which was getting people to buy Bitcoins and tell their friends to buy Bitcoins. And it was this kind of get in and then get more people in and although obviously Bitcoin itself it's the technology itself is not a Ponzi scheme the way that it was used in that particular uh, scheme was so the underlying technology was sound yeah but someone built a Ponzi on top of it which you could say that about US dollars you know at yeah. the times that um, Ponzi schemes have been done over the years um, it was just it's not the US dollar that's well the US dollar is flawed but it's not that that isn't the reason it's, it doesn't make it flawed because there's a Ponzi scheme associated with it Um but I suppose the way that you need to consider, you need to look for the way that where the money's coming from, which I think you had some thoughts about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what I've read about Steemit is, is basically, um, is, is the whole thing is designed to promote content and try and get the people who've created those content, the content to be paid without having to get advertisers or whatever. Um, but the way the platform works seems to be extremely heavily weighted in the favour of early investors mm-hmm. um, so um, uh, if you look up uh, Tone Vase um, he's done a, a total uh, step by step of the white paper mm-hmm. and taken it to bits um, and he s- seems to suggest from what he's saying I mean he's, he's done the hard work of reading it all and understanding it um, which by all accounts isn't very easy um, <clears throat> but he seems to think there's sort of uh, about 86 people at the top of the tree who will benefit greatly uh, and then the further down you are the less you'll get um, and it just depends on how much traction your uh, content gets as to how well you get re- rewarded mm. but for every piece of content that is created the creator gets one token and another nine tokens are also created for people who have voted that. Um, can, can, uh, again, I've not been on it. Could you just create crap? Like, could you just put yes, anything you on it? it? Yeah, yeah just, you could do it. I mean, yeah. it's basically, it's, it's, it seems to be what I've seen on there is a bit like Medium, um, mm-hmm. which is a, a sort of, I think it's a bit of a long form Twitter side, mm-hmm. isn't it? Um, um, so yeah, it's basically most of it is written articles. Some there's some video stuff, some YouTube videos I've seen. Um, I don't know what else people may or, or I don't know what's theoretically possible to put on the platform, but that seems to be what it is. And, I mean, some people have basically written a point that says why Steemit is a Ponzi scheme, and then put it on Steemit, and it's done quite well and made them some money, which is a bit <laughs> meta. <laughs> Fair it's a bit. Uh, uh, so it's. Um, uh, but yes, I mean, Steemit itself, from what I understand, uses three different tokens, and you'll initially get um, Steam, which, uh, but that's designed to depreciate extremely quickly. I think it's about 
thirty percent a day off the top of my head. Mm. And then you convert that to steam power, uh, which you can can't get out of the system very quickly. If you wanted to clear all your steam power out, it takes two years, and uh, then you've converted it to steam dollars, which are pegged to the dollar, uh, which you can then trade. So that's seems to be how it works, but it all sounds a bit complicated. Sounds like some kind of hybrid between the future of a community sourced art or material and then the wall garden of you know your, your iTunes or whoever where they're all just trying to get you into a, a closed system and therefore pay charge you in, charge you as much as possible within this closed system yeah it seems like they're trying to bring those two things together which in theory you know like an open source sort of community uh, provide, providing material um, shouldn't have the locks of you know taking two years to get your money out you know that, that kind of question the fundamental I'm not saying that the actual technology is flawed but I'd kind of question the point of doing it in that way yeah if it wasn't just to kind of inflate the it, currency it, 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 to, it, to me yeah. it seems um, well, it, it seems more complicated than it need be yeah for whatever reason um, and I'm not an expert enough to know exactly what that reason is mm-hmm. um, uh, so but I mean people have questioned all sorts of things as as scams um, even people saying that Ethereum is a scam mm. you had some thoughts on Ethereum um, I don't think it was inden- intended as a scam I mean, is there such scam. a thing as the accidental Ponzi that's the other question oh okay where somebody sets it up in good faith and actually it doesn't work and I think that there's, there's space for that being the explanation for some of these things that fall to bits mm. is that it wasn't done for, for malicious reasons it's just they didn't design it very well and so it fell to bits um, and then an outsider can look at that and say well that was a Ponzi scheme yeah mm, but uh, it might, may not have been the intention to begin with and I, I, to be fair I think if, if Steam it does turn out to be a Ponzi that might be how it's ended up that way because I imagine the people designing it are trying to keep value within the platform for the purpose of expanding their product and expanding the platform and therefore and also enriching themselves but it's whether or not as you say it was done at the beginning to think if we can get people in this platform we can inflate the the currency or we can encourage the, you know the, the keep the keep the, the value within the platform and therefore sort of cash out uh, when we need to and I you know, never know the intentions of it, of it and unless they came clean I suppose but um I said, and I think as I mentioned earlier that there's times where I've been trading cryptocurrencies and have jumped on an early coin thinking it had something innovative and probably down to the fact I hadn't done enough research in the first place um, I'd find found the value drop quite quickly and um, that that you know again it was I don't think it was intended as a Ponzi scheme but I kind of got caught up in the initial hoo-ha and, and, yeah. and found myself with something that I'd paid a lot more for and it was worth a lot less now and uh, I suppose to me I could have felt like a Ponzi scheme but at the same time it was my own judgement that got me there in the first place and I really should have done my own my own research before buying those coins or I yes but does anybody ever buy into a Ponzi scheme knowing it's a Ponzi no, scheme no. so you know and that brings you back to do the people who are running it understand it enough and realise whether well, or not is what they've made is a Ponzi scheme or yeah. not um, I mean there's an argument that large sectors of the economy are just giant Ponzi schemes mm-hmm. um, but they haven't fallen over yet so true but what will happen you know what, one, there will come a day when everything when things stop happening and stop working and what happens then yeah so I think what's quite interesting about Ponzi schemes or at least scams within the cryptocurrency space is that in theory, cryptocurrency and the blockchain the technology behind it could reduce a lot of fraud and could reduce a lot of scams within the real world. Um, so, using the blockchain to register, uh, I think there's a company at the moment looking at registering uh, trainers, sort of night trainers, or whatever uh-huh. people. Some people think night trainers are very valuable, and the ones that they think are very valuable, it's they've been pulling the serial code of those so-called valuable trainers onto a blockchain so at least when they come to sell those valuable trainers at a later stage 
they can say that those trainers aren't uh, replicas or they're not fakes or, or whatever it may yeah. be. Um, and again, I think that's a really interesting point is that, yes, you can be stung by scams, Ponzi schemes or whatever it may be within a cryptocurrency space when the actual underlying cryptocurrency isn't actually trying to scam you. But in theory, the technology itself could do a lot, do away with a lot of the uh, a lot of fraud. Um, yes, once it's got enough, it's been well enough established, and but like anything new, as soon as it gets some value, people are going to be looking for the holes in it, looking for how they can hack it, how they can get the value out of it yeah. legitimately. So these things have got to exist in the first place and be hacked before people understand where all the weaknesses are, uh, and then enable to design them without those weaknesses, I suppose. Um, so. Um, but as you were saying, I mean, what you were just saying there brings you back to the, what you were saying about the Chinese triple M. Mm -hmm. You know, that's built on Bitcoin, which is a perfectly legitimate mm -hmm. currency. Yeah. But it had a Ponzi built on top of it. Yeah. Um, just trying so. to think if I can come up with any Ponzi schemes. I know. Now. <laughs> 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 no, I don't know. Uh, 